Welcome to Statics. Introduction to Simple Trusses A truss is a certain type of structure. Train and other vehicle bridges can often be classified as trusses. The structures that support the sloped roofs of wood-framed residential buildings are typically referred to as roof trusses. A truss can be defined as a structure composed of two or more slender members joined together at their endpoints. We will refer to the truss shown here as a plane truss because all of the members are in a single plane or two-dimensional. Otherwise, we would call it a space truss. The trusses we analyze in this class will be limited to plane trusses. For a structure to be classified as a truss, then the following assumptions should be accurate. First, all loads applied to the truss must be applied at the joints, as demonstrated in this figure. This means that we ignore individual member self-weight, or else split the member self-weight in two and move each half to opposite ends. The second assumption is that all members are joined together by smooth pins. In real structures, this assumption is rarely met. In typical residential roof trusses, members are connected by nail plates that can bend and permit some rotation, sort of like a pinned connection. So this assumption is often used in design. In larger structures, metal plates called gusset plates are often used to connect members at the joints. Like the nail plates in roof trusses, gusset plates can deform and do allow some rotation at the joint. So again, the assumption of a pin connection when analyzing the structure is often used. One other assumption is that no members are continuous through a joint. For example, members AB, BC, and CD are three individual members connected to each other at the joints. This assumption is usually violated in real trusses. So these types of trusses are sometimes referred to as academic trusses. If the three assumptions previously discussed are true, then each truss member acts as a two-force member. Recall that this means that the forces on each end of the member are equal and opposite, and are directed along the axis of the member. The forces on the member cause tension if they pull on each end, acting to elongate the member. The forces on the member cause compression if they push on each end, acting to shorten the member. These are the only two options. There are several analytical approaches to analyzing member forces in trusses. We will look at two of them, the method of joints and the method of sections. In this class, we will deal with simple trusses only. Simple trusses are formed by starting with a triangle shape, which is a very stable shape. Then, two additional members are added to form another triangle and two more to form another triangle, and so on.